That was scary. Yeah. That was scary. And then what Ilya did to Max is even scarier, oh. too. Oh, wow. Because I, 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 I saw Max as being totally under in control of that entire fight. I was like, he's got it tactic, tactically. He's got him. He's going to win this. And then I wouldn't just, have said that. I wouldn't have said that. I would have said there's always danger with Taporia. Mm. He's yeah. fucking so dangerous. When he hits you, it's so it's different than anybody, especially with his hands. He's, yeah. His fucking boxing is so high level. And there's sh shots that he was landing that would thud, and you could see it in Max's face. He caught him with a bunch of good shots yeah. before that. But Max was landing a lot of stuff, too. But he was forced into these exchanges. And when you fo fi you're forced into these exchanges, Ilya has superior technique. Mm -hmm. his, his punches come straight down the pipe. His hooks are perfect. His distance management is perfect. He's super aggressive. And the consequences of getting hit by him are so bad. Grave. Mm -hmm. That so, left hook he caught Max with. Oh, oh my, my god! Oh, just you, spun his head around. And so, you, you rarely see. I mean, in, in the UFC, you you see obviously people who are you know multi mm -hmm. but it's rare that you see someone who's so pure with the way they hit. Mm -hmm. I was watching him going. This guy looks like a boxer the way that he hits. But he's that way with everything. He's that way with his grappling. He's out with, with his submissions. He's just really, really fucking good. And he's the new guard, right? Like yeah. every generation mm. comes up with a new guy who's a like a new high water mark of technique. Yeah, and that's where Ilya is. So yeah. who's going to challenge him now? Do you think Volkanovski? Yeah, they're going to have a rematch. Oh. I think Volkanovski taking that fight three months after getting head kicked into a you know a, a KO. That's kind of crazy to do. Mm. Three or four months later, he's fighting Ilya Taporia, the most dangerous puncher he's ever faced. Mm. I think that was crazy. Uh, and I think now he's had a long time to recover, but it's always going to be in his head that that guy just knocked me the fuck out. Yeah. You know, and look, that's the kind of thing that drives a guy like Volkanovski because he's such a warrior. Like he doesn't shy away from the most difficult challenges. Because if he did, he could have taken some fights with some up and coming contenders. He could have said, "There's probably someone who wants to challenge him. There's some guy he thinks he could definitely beat. Let me just get this." fight under my belt and then you know but he's no he wants to go right back in there and fight for the title again and am i right in thinking there it's power versus speed because volkanovsky is so fast so quick Ilya is fast too man yeah there's no difference in the speed really no i don't think so oh wow i don't think there's there's a little bit of difference when you're loading up you're not going to hit as fast you know if you're just trying to like touch someone you can touch them much faster but Ilya's is fast as fuck he's not slow at all there's no, he doesn't have any disadvantages. He doesn't have any weaknesses, man. That's mm -hmm. the thing. That's why I say he's the new high water mark. There's people that are thinking maybe he's the best pound for pound fighter alive. Like there's a lot of discussion about that online. It's pr a little premature, especially when John Jones is still out there and there's other elite guys that are still out there. But Islam Makachev's another one. You know, like it's a, it's a real argument that he's the best pound for pound guy alive. But it's fucking close. Ilya's, he might be the best. And if you think about Vol Volkanovski, a fighter is never the same after they've been knocked out, particularly Especially a blow like that. Especially twice in a couple of months' time, in yeah. four, four, four months' time. So there's already an injury there. There's already a propensity to get, no to, to get knocked out. There's mm -hmm. a weakness. And then you're going up against a fighter with that power. Mm -hmm. You know, or you think all he's going to need to do is just connect, and he may be Sparko again. Who knows? I mean, I don't know what kind of strategy Volkanovski will employ. I don't know if they'll try to do something different. City kickboxing, the place that he trains at, is very, very, very high level, and those guys always have excellent game plans. So maybe there's something they saw that Volkanovski couldn't capitalize on because he was still dealing with the effects of the KO loss to Makachev, which, you know, you get KO'd like that, a bad one. That was a high kick, shin to the head. Mm. Those stay with you for a long time. Mm -hmm. You might not be the same person. So he might have fought still under the effects of that KO. So now he gets knocked out again by Ilya. Now he's had a long time to rest. And that's what you really need if you've been knocked out like that. You need treatments. There's like concussion protocols. There's a bunch mm -hmm. of different things that people can do to help their brain health. But like when Manny Pacquiao got knocked out by Juan Manuel Marquez, Freddie Roach didn't let him fight for a year.